Welcome, everyone. Welcome to the Agency Rainmaker TV show. This is where we help agency owners make it rain to uh, fill those dry sales pipelines uh, with quality, right fit prospects. And a special guest today, somebody who has been in the trenches, uh, Claire Price, welcome to the Agency Rainmaker TV show. Thank you, Henry. Thank you for having me. Well, we're going to put you to work here. The first thing we want to know is, who is your who? Who do you serve now? Give us a, a glimpse into your world. So we work primarily with agency owners in the digital marketing space who are struggling to figure out how to serve their clients more effectively and more efficiently. I can tell you a quick story about that. What what happens when a client comes in the door and most clients are pounding on the agency door and they're saying, I want leads, give me results immediately. Well, what happens when that client is not ready for you? When that client is not ready for the agency and they have to, they don't know their market. They don't know their customers as well as they think they do. What does the agency do? Well, most agencies spend three to four months pivoting and testing, pivoting and testing before they find the right approach that will help their client and really get that campaign on track. So we help agencies get out of that trap. So as your publisher, I'd be remiss if we didn't mention your book. Tell them about the book you wrote. Yes, um, Smart Marketing Execution is the handbook for agency owners and, and uh, business owners and consultants who want to execute smartly and not quickly. And in the book, we have the process of smart execution involves first starting with strategy instead of action. Uh, that is a big surprise for a lot of small companies and small businesses. But when you start with a strategy, you avoid mistakes, you eliminate trial and error. And trial and error marketing is the most expensive thing that a marketing agency or a business owner can do. We call it trial and terror. Trial and terror is better. Trial and terror marketing. Um so you had a pretty interesting background to write this book. Give them a thumbnail of your background. So thank you, Henry. I appreciate you mentioning that. Actually, I don't have a marketing background. I did not start out in marketing. I started out as a tech reporter working for Information Week magazine. And then I spent um, almost 10 years with Gartner as a research director, as an analyst. So I come at this from a strategy foundation rather than a Marcom or PR advertising foundation. And I think that's the difference between the way I and my team approach things and the way other agencies or other consultants might approach, marketing consultants might approach it. The other thing that, that I do have to mention is that in my years in tech, which I spent most of my career in the technology world, both in hardware and software, mostly software, mostly SaaS products, I did end up writing also a fiction book called Web Betrayal, which is the story of one of the internet's first cyber terrorists. And so that was fun. That was part of my background. But uh, today I'm really focused on helping agency owners really not get a fast start, but getting a smart start. So I want to plug something. I interviewed Claire for my Forbes.com column. And it's Claire, C-L-A-R-E, Price. And then you could Google Henry DeVries, Forbes.com, Claire Price, and a great article excerpted from the book on automating your marketing. A lot of tips and tactics that will automate your marketing. I, I, it's in the book also. Uh, Claire, can you give a summary of, of what you talk about in that chapter? Yes, uh, really, that's so critical today because one of the biggest missing pieces for 
business owners, for the clients of agencies is the automation piece. Businesses automate their business operations. Sometimes they automate their financial operations. When it comes to marketing, there is no marketing operations. And that's one of the things that we wanted to incorporate into the marketing operating system that I describe in Smart Marketing Execution. So when we talk about automation, we talk about looking at the business, incorporating and integrating marketing into the operations of the business, which is a new thought for most of our clients and most of our agency owners, but it's critical. Tell you a really funny story. So a couple of, one of my clients, this is about three weeks ago, uh, was, I was uh, really getting ready to dive into what they were doing. They had five marketing and salespeople total. And each of the marketing and salespeople had their own application that they had purchased in the cloud that they were using. So one had MailChimp, one had Salesforce, one had Pipedrive. Everybody had a different application. Nobody was sharing data. Nobody was sharing information. And the company was fragmented completely. Small company with the silos that you typically find in a big enterprise. So we were able to help them consolidate and automate on a couple of key platforms that really work for them. Just pick one and go with it. <laughs> okay, that is a good story. Um, tell them what you do at Octane Growth Systems. So that's a different kind of company. Give us a, a look into that world. So with Octane, the way that we start working with our clients is the first thing we do is we look at their business. We evaluate their business operations. We evaluate their business needs. We evaluate their goals. We The one thing we don't do, and I think this is really, it's very different from most marketing companies. We don't start launching stuff. We don't do stuff. We spend a lot of time evaluating and understanding what they really need to do and how they may best need to do it. Another example, which is in my book, is did you know, Henry, there are 11 routes from to cross the country from one end to the other? I now, did not know that. You did know that? I did not know that. Yes. Um, I actually have a map of them in my book. And uh, we I moved from Sacramento, California to Raleigh, North Carolina, July of 2020, in the midst of the pandemic. So you can imagine that was quite a, a, an interesting journey. We had to figure out which route we were going to take. So there, for example, there's a Southern route. You can go LA through Arizona, down through Alabama, uh, and, on, and then of course for us on to Raleigh. Now you can use the Northern route. You can do across the Rockies and see Across the mountains, do fall foliage in Vermont and Maine and those areas. There's even a route um, it, for sports fans, Henry. And I know that you're a baseball person and that you have visited most of the stadiums. So there's a route for you to go to visit the museums and the stadiums. Um, so well, my yeah. wife is familiar with that route, Claire. Okay, She's familiar with it. <laughs> good, good route. Love it. Um, so. So the point that I'm making with this story is don't let don't let you don't let what you've done in the past or the route that you've taken in the past be the way that you go in the future. Markets are always changing, clients are changing, opportunities are changing. Step back and evaluate the route. I have a a, a way to do that in my book. It's called Smart Pathways. And I even have a growth factor formula attached to that where you can use a formula to evaluate the return on investment of the of the campaign or of the path before you launch it. When you speak to CEO groups like Vistage, that growth management topic is very interesting to them, isn't it? Yes. The because... problem is that most people think the way to grow is to go is to just keep doing what they've been doing before, but do it faster and harder. And we both know, and I know you know this as well as I do, doesn't work every time. 
Hundred percent sure. Well, let's get to the big how question. How do you make it rain? What's your advice to to agency owners for how they can make it rain? I know this is going to sound like something people have probably heard before, but I really think it, it's in the power of relationships. I think making it rain is in the power of relationships. And the one thing, and I'm going to give a shout out, shout out to a good friend of yours and becoming a good friend of Mark, mine, Mark LeBlanc, for mentioning that one of the things that you have to do when you're starting sales conversations is go back to those people who are most important to you and stay in touch with them. People that you've known for five years, 10 years, and keep in touch and deepen those relationships. You'll never know when someone will pop up and give you a referral from a long time ago. Now, I have a very cute story around this one, so I gotta tell it. Okay. So um, when I moved to Sacramento, I moved to a very small town outside of Placerville called Shingle Springs. Uh, it's in, in the Sierra foothills. I bought a piece of property and my next door neighbors were longtime residents. I was a fairly new property owner of five acres and they were the most generous, wonderful people. Uh, they had a 10 year old son named Dylan. Excuse me. If he ever hears this, his name was Dalton, Dalton Hemsworth. So about three years ago, Dalton popped up on LinkedIn and wanted to connect with me. And he's now in real estate. And he is, we have been uh, connected now back and forth on LinkedIn. And he just popped up and gave me a referral. Oh. So you never know where what's going to happen with a long-term relationship, even with someone that you, that you knew when they were 10. Mark has taught me the power of understanding your referrals come in different flavors. One flavor are advocates, people who do not want any money back or remuneration for sending someone your way because they want to feel that their recommendation had no gain to it. Other people are affiliates and, and we're fine either way, but affiliates expect that this is a relationship where there might be a 10% uh, fee going back and forth for uh, lining people up. And then there are those long-term clients, those people who, as you said, you know, they're so valuable to you, but maybe you haven't called them or done anything for five to 10 years, which is just a shame. And, and you need to reach out and let those people know. As one of my mentors and authors, Patricia Fripp, the first female president of the National Speakers Association says, it's not their job to remember you. It's your job to remind them that you exist. Absolutely. So, great tip on that. Another tip for rainmaking? I, another tip for rainmaking would be do something to build your business every day. Hmm. That is something that I think as business owners, we get busy I will tell my personal experience, and I think a, other agency owners would share this experience, is you spend a lot of time business development when you have few or, you know, clients that are starting to end their projects. You're you're scrambling for business. You're trying to get it done. You're, you're getting them in the door. You get them in the door. You get busy. You do not then keep that pipeline flow going. So it becomes a start, stop, start, stop cycle. So what I have learned to do is to take 15 minutes a day and I call it my five alive. So I reach out to five people every day to keep that pipeline open, regardless of how crowded my calendar and my uh, deliverable schedule is. I, I learned that from the first uh, big agency I worked for and they, um, had a nice niche in the real estate industry and the owner uh, every day, you know, she, I know how busy she was. She was very busy, but every day she had time and she would just get on the phone and have some friendly phone calls with people. And it was never pressure about, do you have anything? But I like to use this. Um, we don't make up for not flossing our teeth by vigorously flossing one day out of the month. 
Uh, really? <laughs> you know, we, we need to floss daily. We need to be thinking about rainmaking daily. And in book, uh, Rainmaker Confidential, that was one of the secrets that came out from the very successful rainmakers in the agency world in professional services consulting is that um, consistency trumped commitment. They were consistent. And what they did every day was more important than some grand campaign when the pipeline was dry. So thank you for that. Um, Claire, thank you so much for being interviewed today and, and sharing your wisdom. And again, what was the name of that book, Claire? Smart, ex Smart Marketing Execution. There we go. So there's a tip for everybody. If you have a book, you need to plug it several times in an interview. Uh, so thank you, Claire. We look forward to, to having you back on the show. I know you have so much more to give and we'd love to have you back. Uh, thank you, everybody, for listening. Uh, want to encourage you to be consistent in your rainmaking and go out there and make it rain. <laughs>